come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast, and we come your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. You can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button, because all of that helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. Ready or not, were you ready today, Colin? Yeah, I mean, what, <laughs> this we're Saturday we're... is a 24-hour period. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're correct. And we are the Saturday Night Freak Show, yes. which you're is correct. when, of course, everybody is listening to us yeah. on Saturday night. If you're mm-hmm. not, you're doing it wrong. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Michaela, what did we watch tonight? We watched Looper. Ooh, directed from, by... Oh, oh from here. <laughs> 2012. It's 10 years old now. Ah, Okay. Hate that. Directed by, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? And for the Old. next hour, we will t- dissect the psyche yeah. of Michaela. I feel, I feel like I got fucking zapped through a loop. <laughs> uh, right? Wouldn't it be weird if our future selves walked down the stairs right, right now? Because they knew at this oh moment. Oh, my God. I know, yeah. I keep waiting for that, actually, every day. I live <laughs> yeah. in fear. Yeah. Oh, dude, just, of just showing up? Just showing up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But maybe, <laughs> but maybe you're the one that's got to go back and confront your other self. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah. sounds like yeah. a lot of work. I don't remember that. Though. Holly is not up for no, it right just now. Kill that's, me. A, that's a work. <laughs> just Colin, do you have take a, the gold um, and kill me? Just take the gold and go. I dude. hope there's like a hatch in this basement we can drop down in to get away from there's our, our we're loop we're closers. Yeah, we yeah. talked with Igor. I know that it's there. See, this <laughs> yeah, is all timey wimey uh, stuff yeah, that we're going to get into. It is. Oh, shit. Uh, who directed this movie? <laughs> the now divisive Ryan Johnson. Yeah, uh, I still like him. Oh, what a ten years! <laughs> yeah, I was, I was. Yeah, this is me going back to 2012 version of me saying, "Hey, you're going to hate this guy in a decade." Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, did he re- redeem himself with Knives Out? He worked towards redeeming himself okay. with Knives Out. <laughs> like, there's there's levels of Ryan Johnson. Like, yeah. So when he one, hits, he hits. One level, I hate him. One level, okay, I like him again. Hate him. Like him again. He's like, like a Sour just, Patch Kid, man. Yeah. Like, I still don't like him for what he did, but I like him for what he did. Okay, you know what but, I mean? Yeah. But for you know what, what I mean? he did, so I'm sitting in the basement <laughs> with four or three other people who uh, believe that Ryan Johnson ruined Star Wars. He had a major hand in ruining. He's not solely responsible, but he had a major hand in ruining Star Wars. I don't. I blame Kathleen Kennedy for I hiring Ryan Johnson. Well, let's put it this way. <laughs> for not having a vision. Okay. For, for not having for no, not having no, a leash. A for not having a leash on Ryan Johnson. Yeah. Maybe. I blame That's, that for not yeah. having a plan. For no As plan. I, I'll always contend. Ryan Johnson made the last movie in that trilogy. He just made it second. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not, 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 entirely know, his, not entirely his fault. You know, Sean, you're thinking maybe I need to reevaluate Last Jedi because I have not seen it since it came out. Like I have not re- gone back. Oh yeah, I think so. so. I it, think it's, it's a movie but... that makes a lot of bold choices, mm-hmm. but it's like none of those choices are anything. You know, yeah. for uh, you know, the, yeah. I have gone back and rewatched it <laughs> yeah. a few times. Yeah, and I'm still angry. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I was very yeah. angry when I watched yeah. it. Yeah, I'm still mad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, in previous episode, Brick, he also did he all yes so, brick you know? that was his first yeah. movie mm-hmm. yes okay so he explodes on the scene with this little indie movie if you haven't seen brick it's, uh it's good. I like yeah it. i think it's uh good. well two of us were here i was not on the episode but i would recommend it right i think <laughs> i think we did recommend well at least a lot of, i mean i like did the majority of it was uh recommended brick you should go back so brick is basically if you don't know what it is it's like uh it's like a private detective movie, like a noir private detective movie, but it takes place in high school. Yes. Uh, where, you know, where the detective character is a student, you know, yes. and all this other stuff. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. And then it, he follows it is, that up. It is uh, noir. It is neo Yeah, and Joseph Gordon Levitt is in it. Yes. Right. Yep. Uh, and he followed that up with a movie called The Brothers Bloom. Yes. I don't think I'll ever watch that movie. With, was it Ruffalo? And, Ruffalo uh, and uh, Adrian Brody. Brody. Adrian mm-hmm. Brody. Yep. And there was somebody else in it too. Uh, uh, Rachel Weiss. Mm-hmm. Rachel Weiss was in it. Yes. And I've I seen it saw once. it once. Yeah. And it didn't really. Maybe that's what I should go back. I think that's the, at, maybe that's the one we like, need to go revisit. <laughs> yeah. Because I only saw it once. I was like, mm, no, I don't think so. I don't All like right. it. And then from there, is it to Looper? Well, yes. he did a lot of TV as well. Breaking okay. Bad. Breaking Bad, Terriers, he did... But in capacity of, like, episodes a of writer? Bad. Uh, no. no I, guess, he, I don't think he wrote on that. Not on those. This was his... I'm going to say the dangerous words. This was his passion project that he had been working on since 2002, he claims. Okay. Yeah, this is the one that always is in the drawer, and then you add stuff to it's, it. It was the, a blacklist script for a long time. 
You know, it kind of felt, you know, when I was watching it tonight, there were elements like even, you know, uh, you know, it, it, when you're trying to, I guess, like, you know, as a, it, when you're writing something like this and you're trying to piece together, like how to get uh, to your end mm-hmm. and then you're like, I can't solve this problem. And then you put it in a drawer. Yep. And then 10 years later, you're like, wait, what if the guy just knows what the current guy is experiencing mm-hmm. and that would lead you and then you're like, bam, right. and then you go back and you do a rewrite where you mm-hmm. add that in. Right, because you got you to make sure that <laughs> yeah. rule follows all the way yeah. through the rest yeah. of the movie. And I even, love that. Yeah, I love it. Time travel yeah. is a whole. I don't loop. think I could do it. I don't think I could write time travel, at least not in a way that would work. No, this movie, <laughs> this movie required patience. Yeah. Yes. For sure. And attention to detail. Yeah. 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 You're saying in the writing, not not in the viewing, but in the writing. Right, right. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Yes, in the writing. Um, okay, so it's a time travel movie, Looper. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, 2044, I believe, is the year we came yes, on. Mm-hmm. Which means Joe was born in 2019. So if you had ah! a ba- if you had a baby in 2019 named Joe, watch out. He's, that kid might is going to grow up to be a Looper. A Looper or the Rainmaker, or yeah. it's going to grow up to be something. So is this like okay? I mean, it's 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 cool. That they made this because this is like a bold choice as far as uh, casting Mm -hmm. that your two main leads who are the same guy at two different points Mm -hmm. in time. And then Joseph Gordon Levitt is the one who is like, okay, I will actually try to do an impression of the other guy. Right. (laughs) The other guy being Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Yeah. Right. And I don't, I think it would have been too extreme if you're like, Bruce, we need you to play. Joseph Gordon. So that's the, easy, okay. the easier way is to do it the opposite way. <laughs> Here's my thing with this movie. It, it and it like not only is it a time travel movie, it's a time capsule movie because if this movie were made now, it would be three hundred million dollar budget. Bruce Willis would be de aged to younger Bruce Willis, yeah. and it would be oh, three yeah. hours long. I saw that movie. It was called The Gemini Man. Yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so like. The fact that they used prosthetics on Joseph Gordon-Levitt to make him look like Bruce Willis and just had him study his mannerisms, it seems so antiquated to how we would approach this movie now. You know, right? when you're saying that, I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely right. It does. Because now... This is so charming yeah. about oh, yeah, it. We'd be de-aging everybody. <laughs> this, is the, uh, mm-hmm. this is lo-fi sci-fi. And, it, yeah. and they yeah. do it really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially the, the world building that they come up with. Because it is 2044, but it's like we, we slapped um, uh, solar panels on all our shit. Yeah. Just to keep it going, yep. but didn't upgrade anything else. All the vehicles look kind of current now, just beat to shit. Mm-hmm. Like we've just been using the same things over and over again. Um, yeah, it's not a completely futuristic world. It's a believable futuristic world. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if that was done like partially because of like a budget restriction or something like that. Yeah, but you, it go, does... you all want to take a stab at the budget on this movie? Ooh. $65 million. Right, I think this is 40 back. mm. Probably maybe. Yeah, it's like 40 Yeah, I was going to say maybe, maybe 50 when you're like twenty million of that is Bruce Willis, thirty million dollars. Oh, oh, this is a cheap, cheap movie. Yeah, yeah for, this I, is, I guess for how for, for what we just saw. Yeah, yeah. That this is, would be a two hundred million dollar movie if it was made now. Like yeah, if it doesn't, we don't get movies in this budget range. It anymore. doesn't feel cheap. No, no. They used no. every penny. It's all on screen. But mm-hmm. I guess it's a you know in in scaling down the um the future world styling, it's like they do kind of stick within that uh. Very nicely, you know. I mean, like the production design all does tie together. Mm -hmm. It's kind of gives you a world where it feels like um, law and order has basically collapsed. Mm -hmm. So we're never told what happened as far as like how the economy works or anything. Right. But you're right. It's like we're still driving around. I mean, it's budget friendly because you can just get junker cars right off the. But right, yeah. at the same time, it's like, well, we'll put some tubes on them and all that. And mm-hmm. like, I don't know what's fueling these things, but yeah. clearly they have harnessed but it solar looks power like or something they in order figured to, it out. to right. figure it out. There's no. Yeah, you just put a tube from the gas tank to the exhaust pipe. It looks like it's recycling. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it looks like it's recycling. Ingenuity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. But there's a lot of like, um, it's like slum. Uh, like production design where yep. everybody seems like poverty seems very high. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you have uh, well, there's like no discernible law and order aside from the mob. The mm-hmm. mob is the law and order. Yes. Because at some t- points I was seeing helicopters going by, or drones, you know, with mm-hmm. lights on them, searchlights, and I'm like, 
what do they control the you know they yeah. the, the, and it's like oh that is the that is it yeah the they police say, force they yeah. say Abe runs the city they said he got bored just doing the looper stuff so he just took over the city as a hobby is what they say right so, like, by the yeah, way this is Kansas and I, yeah <laughs> and, right. but I, and I like how Kansas. he says in any other city that would be impressive yeah but exactly right. this is Kansas yeah. mm-hmm. so he he took over uh probably we'll say Kansas City yeah that's Missouri that's Missouri. I was, uh, <laughs> it's on the okay. border. Lawrence, Say Lawrence Kansas. I don't know. Sure. Uh, um, so, okay. So uh, get us into this movie, I guess. How are we introduced to um, the world of Looper? Through a lot of voiceover. We get some voiceover. We get mm-hmm. a cold open, kind of, don't mm-hmm. we? Before our title sequence. Yeah. We get Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the field waiting for his loop to come through and then the little pocket watch and then shoots his loop. What we yep. get... Yeah, well, I mean, what we with that is the cold open. It's it's a great way to open this movie because it gives you a lot right off the bat. I mean, we get uh, I think the first shot is a full look at Joseph Gordon Levitt's face, prosthetics and all, which is kind of a great way if you're like you got to acclimate people, right? Like get it in there right away. First shot, and this is what he's going to look like. Get used to it. Wait, how, do, how do you guys feel about the prosthetics? Okay, I'm not going to lie. When I first saw this, like I wasn't sure what I was looking at. So <laughs> because when- I was like. <laughs> Why does he look weird? And I couldn't really figure it out because I was like, that's Joseph Gordon-Levitt, but he looks weird. And it just didn't, it didn't register with me like the entire time I watched it the first time. The first time I watched this with my partner, we were both like under the influence Mm -hmm. and he paused. He was like, stop this. What's wrong with his face? (laughs) And then he Googled it because he was like, he needed to be like, no, that's not what this man looks like. Yeah. He thought he was having a bad trip. And I was like, no, 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 it's the movie. It's the movie. We promise. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's uh, I mean, it. I because I I kept looking at it. He, He basically they've given him Bruce Willis's nose, upper lip. Uh, mm-hmm. eyebrows and you know, contacts. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, I'm looking at that nose and I'm like, that's pretty, you know, it looks pretty good. It, I think it holds really up oh, yeah. under close up yeah. scrutiny and all this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, for a lot of the movie, you kind of have to do that. Like watching Gordon, Joseph Gordon Levitt play Bruce Willis. And like, mm-hmm. you know, he's doing that lip person, you know, how the he squint, like, the squint. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, oh, it's a pretty good, uh, you know, yeah, impression of uh, the Bruce way he Willis. like the way he like turns his head and looks out the corner of his yeah. eye. Yeah. That there is was, just like Bruce there Willis. There was one moment in particular when he's talking to Jeff Daniels and Jeff Daniels is telling him to um, go to China or whatever mm-hmm. or learn Chinese. <laughs> And he just kind of like smiled. He's like, okay. And I was like, oh, oh my yeah. God, that yeah. was Bruce yeah. Willis. Yeah. Like yeah. it was spot on. It's great. But I guess that's the upside to the, or the antithesis of the $200 or $200 million version of this is it actually gives an actor like a chance to act, you know, right? like mm-hmm. when Nicolas Cage had to play John Travolta yes. or vice versa yeah. face off, you know, or something like that, where you have to take the other personality and it's like, well, this is going to be for an actor you're under scrutiny because the other guy's like in the movie with looking, you. looking at you. <laughs> right. You have to do the, your impression of them to their face in a conversation. Uh-huh. Yeah. Has there been any um, interviews with Bruce Willis on how, you know, what he thought when he saw this movie? I mean, you're He's, watching. He this- said he was surprised with how good Joseph Gordon-Levitt's like interpretation of him was he was like yeah I noticed he even picked up on some little ticks of mine is what he was saying I was <laughs> like oh that's that's nice we, yeah we've been watching you for 40 years Bruce we you know, we know. We'll pick, yeah. we, we pick up on some <laughs> yeah. stuff yeah. I suppose we have to talk about that's the, the other hard part of this sorry yeah. but like we're watching you're trying to impersonate a guy that the public has been seeing for yeah. 40 years yeah, yeah. Right. Like, that's a hard yeah. undertaking right. I would think or it gives you a lot of material to draw also from that. I suppose to, to yeah. do Very a true you know, uh, uh, mimicry of, but, um, the elephant in the room, of course, is like, where did Bruce Willis go? You remember when Bruce Willis used to be like a big box office draw. And then he appeared in these like independent movies. And then he was in movies like Looper. And I remember he was in a movie called death wish. Yeah. And then was this the last time he tried? It feels like it. it, uh, this, it is feels the, like this was it. the time where just like, he had been to us. He had been in a lull, and when we like he's when, back, baby. When we collectively saw this, we're like, "Oh, he's trying! Yeah. Holy shit! He yeah. still got it! <laughs> he still got it!" Yeah. Well, I mean, Death Wish is pretty good too, but I wonder. I think if, you're the only person that's seen that movie, well, his, like in the world. I mean, not just no, here at the freak a, show. A huge, huge deal on Netflix. It was always like one of the most popular. But um, I'll take your word for it. Lies. No. The uh, it seems like whenever well, obviously, Death Wish was a studio backed movie. Mm-hmm. Looper is a studio backed the movie mm-hmm. so like does bruce willis show up when you know like as an actor 
when it's a studio film and it's like, well, people are actually going to see this one, so I have to actually do something because it seems like he has been toiling away for like 10 years in uh, direct video obscurity. Yeah. 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 With it, they all sound like fake movies. With Every movie. title sounds fake. <laughs> and Scott yeah. Eastwood, and I guarantee they start in a movie. I've seen the cover. Yeah. But, yeah, but like, have you guys heard the rumors about his health lately, though? Oh, no. Oh, no. About no. that he's rumored to have early onset dementia, and that's why he's doing these movies where they can come and shoot 20 minutes of him in his garage because he can't remember scripts. Ooh. Well, I didn't oh, hear that he. I don't know if there's uh, any truth to that, but I've seen it co- pop up a lot the past couple weeks. So. I mean, Bruce Willis has always been like, you know, one of the a revered action movie hero, but yes. I know that at one point he did um, want to go and do Broadway, right? And so he did Misery. He was the James Con role. That's in, cool. In Misery. But there was, I guess, performing on a live stage. There's articles that say this is, I don't know if this is hearsay or what, but it was discovered that he had a, a earphone and was being fed the lines. Oh, I bet. Oh. <laughs> So that could back up what you're saying. Yeah. That he just, you know, is actually just having somebody tell him what to say hmm. uh, in these uh, these newer performances and all that stuff. I think that the, the rumor about his health started because he was seen like moving in with his daughters, I guess. And people thought it was really strange that he was moving in with like his adult children. So Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, well see if they make an the announcement. Well, I hope not. Well. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. But he's in Looper, and he's got Joseph Gordon-Levitt <laughs> playing him. Mm-hmm. So how do you get Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt to play as Bruce Willis? So the, I guess the setup, what you're talking about in this cold open, yeah. is we're told that in the future, well, they we're taking place in 2044, but in the future, 30 years from then, time travel is invented, and the monsters... Immediately illegal. And the, right. Which it should be. Yeah, think, it should be. we discussed yeah. on this yes. show, it, it will lead to no good. I mean, paradoxes. even even being illegal, it's still leading to no good, right. you know? Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. But the mob controls it, and they use it basically as an assassination method, so mm-hmm. they can send their target back to the present of 2044, mm-hmm. where there's somebody waiting there to shoot them when they show up. Mm-hmm. And so then you're disposing a body that doesn't exist. Yep. So basically the person has just disappeared from the timeline and yes. in the future mm-hmm. and there's no record of who they are in the past. And how do they mm-hmm. show up in the past? They just blink into existence in a field. They're mm-hmm. deposited through mm-hmm. a, I mean, that's I the love thing. this. Like this movie gets a lot out of like, uh, there's, there's constantly characters telling you like how time travel works. Doesn't matter. It's all time travel. We start talking about that. And we're going to go on forever. Fry your, blah, blah, blah. fry your brain like an egg. Is yeah. that what he said? Yeah. yeah. So he's, and we'll be making diagrams with straws. Yeah. There's a deleted mm-hmm. scene where they make diagrams yeah. with straws and sugar. So at they that do diner, it. At that at diner. At that diner. I yeah. guarantee it. Says, yeah. Don't do it. And then they did it. And then they're like, you know, we said. You know, we yeah, yeah. We said we're not going to do it. it. Yeah. We got into it. But yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a time travel device that we actually see that I was kind of surprised that we actually got that far. And it was mm-hmm. kind of like the uh, 12 Monkeys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You mm-hmm. know, like the thing yeah. that they yeah. sent Bruce Willis back in that. But yeah, when they appear in a field, they have like this jacket on and they have silver bars taped to their back. That's their payment so they can retire, re- quote unquote, retire. And they have a bag over their head so that you can't see who they are until after you shoot them. Yep. They show up, you shoot them, collect your silver. Yep. Move on. But yep. at some point... All Seems like an easy job, honestly. Right? Right. Super easy. You Super work easy. You work for 10 minutes a day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I suppose it's knowing that at some point your loop is going to be closed. But this you still get thing. 30 years after your loop mean, closes. Colin? Did they say... You get thirty. Yeah, years? they say take okay, your so, take your gold, enjoy your thirty years. Okay, and that's why they're all celebrating because they get to retire at like twenty five years old. Yeah. So a guy and shows rich. up in front of you, you shoot him, and he has gold bars on him. That's a message from the future yep. that you just killed yourself. Yep. Mm-hmm. And yep. now you get to live until the guys come and take you to mm-hmm. send you back in time. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So that sounds pretty. Uh, it's all locked up. There's no way that you can you can mess this up. <laughs> Foolproof. Nope. Foolproof. Yeah. Uh, so Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a looper, mm-hmm. um, also apparently a drug addict. He's, yes. They're yep. all hooked on it, so I'm not sure what the relevance of this was to the movie. I think it just shows his, it's, it shows his party lifestyle, yeah. but uh, that also fills in the gaps with um, Sarah's story later, because she yeah. said she yeah. had a party life. And his mom. So Yes, and yeah. so now I think that as you understand just- her... It's like the movie's it's more. the movie's interpretation of showing how someone is wasting their life. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and it brings Piper Parabo into it who is important later on too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's showing mm-hmm. it's showing what Bruce Willis I mean, it's showing the differences between, you know, future Bruce and 
and younger brother. Yeah, he right. got clean. The yes. older right. guy got clean and, you know. But, like, this, I, I, the thing I like about this movie is it's just, like, kind of keeps reminding you all over and over again, like, remember how stupid you were when you were younger? And, mm-hmm. like, this is part of that. Look how stupid he is, you know? Yeah. Look There's at all the bad choices you're making. In this movie, mm-hmm. a lot of, um, like, adult regret, you yeah. know, right. for yeah. um, the lifestyle that you live. I guess it is. that kind of, it's like a melancholic look back on, like, you know, how, how you wasted your life when you were I mean, wouldn't we all like to be able to tell our younger selves, you're a fucking idiot? Like, that's what he does. He gets the chance to do that. He actually gets to, all those memes are like, what would you say to your younger self if you could? Well, Bruce Willis just says, you're a fucking idiot and stop being a child. Yeah, yeah. Shut uh, your child mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I love how much I'm going to say that to my student workers. <laughs> I love how much swearing Bruce Willis does in this movie, too. That's it's great. like, yes, this is a movie for adults. It's rated R. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uncensored yeah. by, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. What was that? Live, uh, live, live free and die hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good, a good day to die hard. I just, oh, I, yeah, live free. Yeah, live free. That was the PG 13 one. Well, those were both. Was it really? They? I think like it came out and they Wait, were. Wait, is the. Yeah, Live Free to Die. That's the one with Justin Long, right? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. cut to PG thirteen. You can see yeah. the R rated version oh, yeah, of it yeah. now, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's yeah. awful. A yeah. Die Hard movie should never be PG thirteen. No, that's horrible. that movie doesn't even feel like a Die Hard movie. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a, you know that it shouldn't be, and I know. But they <laughs> apparently didn't. Yeah. But yeah. Hire us to they, get a, bit, a bigger audience if it's PG thirteen. Everybody. Um, yes, because so many twelve year olds want to go see what the fourth Die Hard movie. <gasps> Right, oh, yeah. like I yeah, yeah. Five year olds are go- go wanting to go see Bruce Willis. <laughs> yeah, movies, exactly. The truth. <laughs> They're for old people. Just admit it. And that own was up when to they it. knew something was wrong when no one showed up to a uh, good day to die. Hard. <laughs> um, it's a terrible movie. Um, terrible movie. <laughs> so okay, so they introduce another. I guess there's Paul Dano is in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yes, for a second. But his um, so his character arc, I guess, sets something up, some rules for us uh, about how time travel works mm-hmm. in this uni- universe. Yes. What's that? Um, the younger version, if they take an injury or cause damage to themselves, it creates like a new injury and scar on the person in the future, which makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. But does that only work? When the two of them are sharing the same space time continuum, because like if I, you know, we don't have a way of knowing. Well, it's like the way that the movie does it. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's one of the most memorable scenes I think mm-hmm. in this. It's so movie. good. It's so it's terrifying. It's yeah. yeah don't watch this on scene under the influence, especially holy shit. But even <laughs> in its implications, I mean, it's not really. It's not like gory. It's no, not, no, no, it's not graphic, but it's horrifying. It, it is. No, it's once seriously, you, right when you it's realize seriously effective when you realize yeah. what's happening. That's the problem, right, Sean? That's what makes it horrifying is because it takes you a few beats it's to like, piece oh. together what exactly is happening. Oh. And again. Lo-fi, sci-fi. Mm-hmm. And again, they are using, uh, uh, I think there was a lot of digital with the nose and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But it is the, it's the um, kind of like the easiest way to, uh, the simplest way to get this idea across. They don't make it right. complicated. They don't, they just show um, pieces of the guy just go missing as his trying to Yeah, we escape. should set this up. Right, yeah. okay. So Paul, Paul Dano. Paul Dano, uh, he gets his future self to come to close his loop yep. but his future self is singing a song that he knew from his childhood that his mom used to sing which genius way to communicate with your yeah. brother self that's, um, genius, yeah. that's like the ultimate secret code right like no one else would know that mm-hmm. so right. and yeah um, you know you're gonna see yourself so just like right so he lets his loop run as they call it mm-hmm. and he's so of course um jeff daniels and his whole mob have like helicopters and everything out to look for him to track him down because as they say like a man from the future on the run is a dangerous thing which i'm like you got a point it's true. Yeah. You got yep. a point, you know. Yeah. Um, if Back to the Future has taught us anything, yeah, about and betting and whatnot. So, in order to take this guy down, they they do we need to go over the whole thing with Joseph Gordon Levitt, no. the safe and all that stuff? That's no, not really no. that important. Yeah. But um, they get Paul Dano, they capture him, and they start slowly torturing him in a way that affects his future version like in the present immediately like at first it starts with a pinky coming off like mob shit and okay. then a couple more fingers and then the tip of his nose is off but so again like, we're not seeing paul dano no we're no. just seeing this happen to the future self yeah and you're not seeing like the nose fall off it's right. just like a frame cuts and then his nose is gone yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you know gone, but he tries like, to yell and he doesn't have a tongue anymore it's like because i guess at, at his age all these wounds would have healed. Yeah. So there's right. like, we're dealing with like a ripple in time mm-hmm. kind yes. of effect. I guess that that's, yeah. which is, this is an interesting way for a uh, you know, time travel movie 
to explore this idea. If, right. If both of you are here, if Marty, if there's two Marty McFlies in 1955, you know, or whatever, that doesn't work. Uh, the, <laughs> the young uh, Doc and the old Doc, and you torture one of them, right. mm-hmm. does the other one like immediately feel the repercussions of that, or is it a separate timeline? Yeah. Well, and they uh, start it by carving into his arm, like, be at, and it's an address at this time. So, like, they start by putting the scar on his arm to communicate the message. And so he's like hauling ass trying to get there. His foot gets taken off so he can't stomp on the gas and crashes a car. Like it just it keeps escalating. It gets crazy. He's crawling on stumps at one point. Yeah. I wonder what mm. at what point they would have stopped if he'd got there sooner. Do do they let him live after that point? Because he's alive. He gets Paul there Dano and they is shoot still him. Alive. Right. But yeah. Paul Dano is still alive. Yeah. When he well, gets there. Yeah, because they you see clearly in the background they're keeping him on life support to keep him alive right. until his future self gets there. But it right. also seems like they may have sedated him also. Like he's oh, yeah. unconscious yeah. while this is happening. Yes. Right. So the, the mob guys catch him and then like knock him out and then just start I mean, it's like within fifteen minutes they're basically like cutting all the parts stumps. off of this guy. <laughs> I love that the this the way they handle the stumps is he just has long sleeve long sleeve shirt and pants on so it's just the actor has his like arms tucked in the shirt i love yeah. it mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. lo- like you said sean lo-fi sci-fi it i works. love it though it it's very, very frightening well. it's a very yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> horrifying so we've also then added that okay this is the stakes of if you violate the uh the situation of, right you know so we know that's where just gordon lewitt, lewitt is going to end up right mm-hmm. eventually yeah. he's going to find himself and himself it turns out to be Bruce Willis, who shows up, but Bruce Willis isn't uh, tied up. This is the right. thing; that, like mm-hmm. he looks him straight in the face, knows that that's him, mm-hmm. and tries to shoot him. But Bruce Willis has got the jump on him because mm-hmm. he's not mm-hmm. tied up. So we're like, "Well, how did this happen?" You know. So then we have to have a branching movie narrative. <laughs> it's it's weird because it's like a Rashomon, but is it a Rashomon because it's the same character? It's two perspectives of the same. Rashomon is like a movie device where an event happens and you go backwards to each person's perspective of that same event. Uh, but, like Kurosawa. And it yeah. works so well in this movie because it's like we're time traveling in the movie. But yeah. is it a Rashomon if it's the same character? I it's two know. perspectives of, but from the same person. I, yeah. So you know what I'm saying? But I like, guess because there's, you know, the, the but, different, you know, the, because they're in two different points in time, I right. suppose it's two different. Right. It's just an interesting, like, I don't know if I've ever seen that in another movie where you see the same character have two completely different perspectives. But this is going to give us, like, I don't know if this is a paradox, because we see uh, Bruce Willis's um, version of events is, you know, when he... So it, there was a, a time when he killed himself when he came through the loop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then went off and lived his yep. 30 years. And we, we see, see that in this. a montage. Which is pretty cool how they did all this. Right? I loved how they handled it. We see him age from Joseph Except Gordon. Except that Levitt. wig. Yeah. That wig. Yeah. Ooh, cut that scene out. We <laughs> There's don't, some stuff. We're we don't like... need a middle, like, in between wig from, from Joseph Gordon Levitt to bald Bruce Lewis. We, we're, we don't need it. Yeah, we don't it need is it. a bit much. It's just like, oh, no, we know he's. We know he never had hair yeah. like that. I'm not fooling anybody. Like, did he? No, did we know he it's not to, Did he have to grow? There were there was at least one scene in this movie. I think he was lying in bed with his future wife, and oh, yeah. he had some. It looked like actual hair, yeah, like longer than he usually has. Mm-hmm. And I'm yeah. like, did he grow it out? I'll bet for he that did. scene yeah. so they could cut it off. And it seems like he's not as close shaved as yeah. he usually is. He's yeah. got mm-hmm. the ring around the back in this movie. Yeah, yeah. He's got mm-hmm. little hair wings. Mm-hmm. Well, in the future, he runs out of all his ill-gotten gains and eventually turns to a life of crime in China and then meets a woman Mm -hmm. who saves him from all this by basically detoxing him, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. falls in love. So it's the power of love, changes this guy around, and then she is killed. On the day that they come to get him, on Mm -hmm. his 30-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this time, he overpowers everybody and goes through the machine so he can end up in front of Joseph Gordon Levitt the mm-hmm. second, <laughs> yep, yep. young Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Time yes. paradox. All right. Oh, so. I, yeah, but I don't think we can't think that way for this movie. I don't. Uh, I don't think as far as time travel goes for this. I don't think paradoxes technically exist in. The, I don't know. It's a tough conversation to have about time. I travel. think like when I think when we get to the ending, more things become clear. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, as for a plot device, we're just supposed to power through this because yeah. the narrative is going to go somewhere else. We learn 
It's more that, about the characters than it is about yeah. the time travel. Yeah. Yes. So we learn that in the future there is basically a Skynet. Okay, it's not Skynet. It's the Rainmaker. This is a mob boss who came out of nowhere and apparently like took over like most of the planet, and he has been killing loopers. Or Kansas. Yep. He basically became head of the organization is mm-hmm. killing all these loopers by closing their loops. You know why they call him the Rainmaker, Colin? Because when he kills people, it rains blood. That's right. She's uh, Ryan Johnson seen Akira. You can just yep. like through mental telepathy blow someone up. Okay, yep. so there's tele- telekinetics in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. T- T- TKs <laughs> as they call them, and they can mostly just assholes that can make quarters float. And I, I love that. I love that they're like, yeah, it's a stupid fucking party trick. Who cares? I yeah. love that attitude about it. And the way they describe it in the movie is very funny. Yeah, just as you said, mm-hmm. it's like we all thought we were going to get superheroes. Mm-hmm. We just got assholes floating quarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, that is like a, a significant. I guess like that was kind of surprising to me the first time going into this you're like okay i know i'm getting a action movie we know there's time travel mm-hmm. but yeah. now there are superpowers in this movie right yeah yeah. And, yeah and they say 10 percent of the population has this which yeah. is a lot like yeah. seems like a lot so this is after the from the nuclear fallout or something <laughs> right. like that right they, right they so, it's something the like that mm-hmm. yeah and paul dano has this doesn't mean anything for paul dano but no Mm-mm. he's he one has of the, the ability quarter. yeah, yeah. mm-hmm you're right. He really isn't in the movie very long. No, he's no, not. He's basically he's there not. to like, look yeah. at all my, I'm awesome. I bought yeah. this new bike. It doesn't work. <laughs> he's got the only like he's new, the new like shiny uh, vehicles yeah. are owned like exclusively by the loopers. Yeah. 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 Did you guys like that Joseph Gordon-Levitt? He's one of those like, I was born in the wrong generation bitches. And he worked <laughs> like, because he wears like the retro clothing. He has the record player. He drives a 90s Miata. Like yeah, he's yeah. a hipster. He is a hipster. <laughs> yeah. He's very much like I was born in the wrong century, bitch. You know? Yeah, because he even gets called out about that. Yeah. They, uh, you know, um, uh, Jeff Daniels plays his boss and oh, yeah. says something like, why do you dress like to do something new. Okay. He so said, this is where Ryan Johnson starts talking all of a sudden because he goes, you know, your ties, it's just a copy of a copy. And I, th- at this part, I started like cringing a little bit because I was like, I've said these things before. <laughs> I was like, I know I've pointed out things and been like, hey, Gen Z, that's from my generation. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh God, become this person now. <laughs> um, and he says, you know, why don't you make something new? Why don't you stop just remaking old things and copying and make something new, contribute something? I'm like, see, Ooh. the seeds were planted Ooh. for Star Wars already. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, this is what he said to Kathleen Kennedy, isn't yep. it? Yep. Do something new. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly. Well, this is like, I guess these are the little moments that I like when writers are directors also, and they kind of, you know, they're, they're writing this stuff, and they're like, okay. They, I mean, that's like a mission statement, right? Mm-hmm. That he's putting it in the middle of his movie. I'm an artist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Artists create new things into the world, or you know? But it's like, okay, well, you're re, like uh, uh, combining things that you've mm-hmm. seen before, and, you know, Mm-hmm. Uh, granted, this movie does take some surprising turns into other movies, right? But <laughs> you know, right. um, so now we have Bruce Willis on the loose. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. We do get a heat scene where you get the two of them at a diner where mm-hmm. they get to sit down and actually it's explain great. their situation to each other. Yes, this is like. If, like this is like a, c- a scene you put on your reel, right? This is where you, you show people, like, look what I got. Like, I'm not only am I doing a Bruce Willis impression, but like I'm giving really good monologues at Bruce Willis <laughs> while I'm p- pretending to be him. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A nice little back and forth. Mm-hmm. And you get, uh, I mean, the movie also. I mean, we should say it is an action movie. It does have like some uh, several. Well, they're not like huge action set pieces, no, but, but they're good choreography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. E- even with the camera work. You know, because oh, yeah. like the With cameras the involved cameras. in yep. the action uh, direction. Mm-hmm. Yes. He is a good director. Looks, Ryan, yeah, Ryan he's he is a good director. It looks good. It looks real good. His camera yeah. movements are good. Yeah. Like, he's a very good director. And there, there's some important nuggets dropped in this back and forth in the diner. Um, well, he uses the, the trick that they used with Paul Dano where he carves into his arm the, the waitress's name and that's how they meet. And I and love the little... Joke oh, there's a really good joke of like, you know, there's a waitress who works on the weekend. Jen fewer letters <laughs> yeah. it's like it's nice to see Bruce Willis be funny like mm-hmm. and uh we see that you know when Joe got like grazed by a bullet earlier it took a chunk of his ear out and oh, Bruce yeah. Willis in the future is that chunk of his ear gone now he's saying that like after you do something I can see what you did which makes sense you would ha- he's creating new memories so right. he's getting new he's receiving those new memories he also says 
two things that I didn't catch until this time I watched it was that he, when he's talking about the Rainmaker, he says, oh, there's all sorts of rumors about him. He saw his mom get shot. Yeah. He has a synthetic jaw, which let's put a pin in that and come back mm-hmm. to that when we talk about the end of the movie. But um, and then he talks about his wife and he has a pocket watch with a picture of his wife. And um, Joseph Gordon loves old like, just show me her face and then I'll know in the future, like, just don't talk to her and let her go about her life so I can let her live. Bruce Willis won't let him do it because he wants to hold on to the memory of her. And if Joseph Gordon-Levitt sees her face, all the memories will disappear from Bruce Willis, which is really I know. sad. <laughs> it's really sad. Really fucking sad. That's like a, yeah, and an interesting. So, I mean, this is kind of trying to work out like this time travel idea that he's come up with. Right. Like, mm-hmm. how would this actually work as far as if, you know, if I can cut your finger off and that disappears, mm-hmm. does that work for memories also? But mm-hmm. what if like you're living an alternate timeline from what you remember, like how does that work? And he says, right. you know, Bruce Willis is like, it's something like it's a cloud, you know, where I can remember. Cause you're wondering like, you know, what happens after, uh, I think he says something to the effect of when they're in the diner, he's like, uh, you know, jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt can like pull out his gun and shoot him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I know what you feel like after you do it. So he remembers yeah. a possibility of like him getting killed, you know, killing mm-hmm. himself in the, right. in the right. diner. But that doesn't actually like solidify or whatever. So and, that's yeah. We should emphasize too, like Joseph Gordon Levitt's like not a likable character in this movie. He's an asshole. He's like, you had your chance, old man. This is my life. You know, he's really, really selfish, which is weird to yeah. be selfish. He really to your future separ- self. He really separates himself from Bruce Willis. Like mm-hmm. he does not see them as the same person. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Are you saying he's not sympathetic, but are we supposed to sympathize with Bruce Willis then? Or does the yeah, movie I think keep, so. The movie keeps maybe flipping. It does. It keeps flipping that, it because it's yeah, it's nice because these characters aren't binary. They have multitudes and gray areas, and I think that's right. really cool. You don't always get that in movies. It's either a hero or a villain. Sometimes you get an anti-hero if you're lucky, you know. But everybody in this movie makes some valid points at yeah. some point. You right. know, everyone has gray areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he uh, he does eventually flip over to one side. For me, anyway, mm-hmm. Bruce Willis does. Yeah. But that's, again, after you've already kind of established him as a sympathy. He just wants to survive, right? He's like, he lost yeah. his wife. Mm-hmm. You know, that seems unjust. So he's yeah. going to get the justice by yeah. going back and, you know. But he also thinks, according to what uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt says later to Sarah, he also may think that if he kills the Rainmaker back in Kansas, that he will just end up back with his wife that he'll disappear right and then he'll and be he back. won't have to die right and that's his and motivation she won't die. right and she won't die they'll be back together that's mm-hmm. his major motivation for this yeah mm-hmm. even though theoretically they won't ever meet because future will be changed so much by the rainmaker not being there but paradox okay so uh, <laughs> no no because he's still the rainmaker only affects his death the Rainmaker, like, he, he could still be a looper, still go to China and True. all that stuff. The yeah, Rainmaker because, only affects his death. Yeah, because the whole thing is the Rainmaker is closing all the loops. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole thing. So Joseph Gordon-Levitt mm-hmm. is still a looper. Yeah. It's just the Rainmaker will never live, never have existed to close the loop. Right. Right. I suppose if that's the only thing that he does, because mm-hmm. I guess yeah. the, the gangs already existed. He right. took them over. So, right. yes. okay, yeah. so the gangs are still there and all that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. So then, so this, the movie is basically, uh, not basically, but a portion of it is the kind of man on the run, uh, plot, you know, um, Bruce Willis living in a sewer. Forgot about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, he went back there. Like I thought it was just for that one scene and then oh, no, he went back yeah, and he leaves the map behind, which is a major fuck up. Yeah. So. Cause he's got a map and on the map is, so Bruce Willis has come from the future with the idea of, I know one of three, he's got a key piece of evidence that would lead him to the birth of the Rainmaker. And so he thinks he's a child that's living currently in 2044. And if he can find him, he's going to kill him. And there's three potentials. And so Bruce Willis becomes the Terminator mm-hmm. of children. Yeah. <laughs> of children. How did your goddamn right I'm going to kill that boy and not become a meme? Like that, when he said that, I was like, damn, they put that. They, that's that, I don't feel like you'd see that in a movie now. <laughs> like he's straight up being like, "Yeah, I'm gonna murder kids." I'm murder this child. Yeah, <laughs> he is gonna murder these kids be- so he can get his wife back. That yes. is like his like, and so you're going like, okay, well, is he a sympathetic character or not? So the movie does kind of play with like, I mean, he straight up murders the first kid. Mm-hmm. We don't see this on yeah. camera, but, shot, but yeah. he feels bad about and it. Re- <laughs> 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 he does. He cries after he does. It. Very, he's very oh well. If he feels bad about it, then that's fine. Yeah, he's remorseful. So. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. As long as yeah. you're remorseful, you'll be right. 
But this leads us into the uh, third act, second mm-hmm. act of the movie, which takes a detour. I mean, it just well, we feels get city, like city farm and then climax. It feels yeah. Like. So this goes to the farm. So because Joseph Gordon-Levitt's like he tore off a piece of this map. And so he goes for the one kid. You right. Know, mm-hmm. uh, going like, well, one of, you know, eventually uh, Bruce Willis is going to come here and I'm going to kill him. You know, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's being hunted. Uh, by the um, other loopers, but he thinks as long as he by can... the Gatmen, the, oh, Gat- yeah, the Gatmen, which are like the henchmen for Abe, they kind of like run the mm-hmm. city. They're so. cool. Mm-hmm. They're well, just, they, they got cool. They got cool dusters on. Yes, no dusters. most of them are. Cool. Most of them yeah. are. Yeah, one's really annoying. Kid mm-hmm. Blue is mm-hmm. a little. Uh... He's too oh, much. Yeah, Kid Blue. Yeah, Blue. yeah. he's a tryhard. Very annoying. Yeah, this is uh, Noah Sagan. Yeah, Noah Sagan. Kid Blue. See yeah, you yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like the the son you have is just like I just want to make you happy, Dad. Mm-hmm. But he keeps fucking everything but up. He can't do anything right. He can't do yeah. anything right. Yeah. Can't even handle yeah. a gun properly yeah. without shooting his foot. Yeah, yeah. But he's like the main like ambulatory antagonist of the movie, right? Like mm-hmm. he gets yeah. everywhere, and is, there's shootouts and stuff with him as he tries mm-hmm. to track him down. Um. So Gordon Levitt ends up at this farm, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden Emily Blunt is in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Halfway through, it's surprise. Like, okay, <laughs> she's going to be a main character in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess this is this is interesting, like on a on a structural level, like how it's like Joseph Gordon's movie, Joseph Gordon Levitt's movie. Then it's like now he's got to share it with Bruce Willis, and we're we are going to have like a Bruce Willis movie mm-hmm. in here, like yeah, uh, yeah. alongside <laughs> it, and then it's going to be okay, now we're going to have an Emily Blunt movie mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. with Joseph Gordon-Levitt in it. So who is Emily Blunt and what is she doing in this movie? She is the mother of Sid, mm-hmm. one of the mm-hmm. children that old Bruce Willis is going to hunt She down. owns the farm. Yep, mm-hmm. her farm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so she's... And she will cut you the fucking head. That's mm-hmm. right. She's a gun-toting yep. mama out there yep. protecting her, her son. I um, love her. Yeah. She's great. <laughs> is it, that's why I was like, <laughs> the first time I saw this movie, I felt like for weeks I went around being like, you hear about this Emily Blunt lady? I know. Like, she's so fucking good in this movie. Like, it is kind how of is she not a movie like, star? Oh, yeah. She's right. amazing. She's good. Yeah. Wasn't this like during the period where she, it seemed like she was in, well, I don't know. I took notes of her because she was in like a lot of genre stuff, sci-fi and horror stuff. She has a did. change of the future trilogy, as I like to call it, with uh, the Adjustment Bureau. Oh yeah. Looper. About that. And then Live, Die, Repeat. Mm-hmm. Edge oh, yeah. of Tomorrow. Yeah, she did a lot. I mean, it seems mm-hmm. like she's eased off the throttle now, but uh, yeah. yeah, she was in like everything, it mm-hmm. seemed like, for a while. She's very good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's why, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's protecting Sid. Um, she's got a complicated backstory. Oh, and the more it gets unraveled, the sadder it gets. It's just like, does any, is this future worth living in? Because everyone's <laughs> life seems miserable. <laughs> But I think that we're getting to that point where, uh, I mean, at the end of this movie, nobody's miserable anymore, really. Like, this movie yeah. is where the misery <laughs> goes to. After this, it's all great. I mean, they still got the vagrant city and all that shit that going on. That is true. <laughs> but I mean, I guess looping doesn't exist anymore because Bruce Willis fucking ganks them all in the third yeah. act. So yeah, he, he takes out he the entire looper system. Took the whole syndicate. Yeah, out. we get the, the Bruce Pretty Willis quick. scene of the movie. Yeah. It is yeah. the Bruce Willis scene. Like, this had to be in a he contract machine guns somewhere, and shit. right? Yeah. Double machine guns just going down a hallway. Mm-hmm. That That's is awesome. the Bruce Willis action. Mm-hmm. This must be in the Doing, uh, Yeah. Yeah. Because he's blowing them all away. It's wonderful. Yeah. I was surprised. I mean, I guess, you know, that's what you get for having Bruce Willis in your movie. You're yeah. Like, well, mm-hmm. Of course. I believe Bruce Willis could single-handedly take out yeah, like, it almost an goes, army of guys. It almost goes a little too far for me, because I like what Bruce Willis is doing, but it's just like, ah, oh, we're falling back in the Bruce Willis action, okay. But he's been an assassin for like 50 years? I mean, that is true <laughs> like, for a long time. Yeah. So he does know what he's doing. Even when he retires, we see him just assassinating for fun? Yeah. I, mean, I, I guess, guess so. like, because he's bored? So well, he does run out of money at yeah. one point in the future. Mm-hmm. But I guess that's the thing. Like, he has more experience because he's an older assassin than mm-hmm. these younger guys. So, mm-hmm. in theory, maybe Abe would be the only one who had, but Abe doesn't seem like he is the assassin no. type. No. Well, they no. even talk about when they're talking about the whole looper setup, they have these blunderbuss guns, and they say that, like, they can only have, like, a 15 yard range. And, like, they're saying it's really powerful and you can hit anything within that range, but anything outside that range, good luck. So it's kind of implying you don't even have to be a good shot to be a looper. Right. You just have to be, just be at close. The, yeah, just be close and you'll hit them. So I kind of think, like, that's the thought is that between, like, Kid Blue and, like, the Blunderbuss, like, nobody's actually good with guns. Mm-hmm. So they just give them a gun, they sit there and yeah. blast away a guy who yeah. has their arms tied in right. front of them. Yeah. Um, 
Bruce Willis ends up in enemy territory because he's captured mm-hmm. at, um, I guess that's where you were saying, Piper Parabo mm-hmm. is in this movie. Yes. Uh, she plays like a stripper, dancer, mm-hmm. entertainer, something that uh, that Joseph Gordon-Levitt uh, has affection for. Yes. Um, but later on, Bruce Willis recognizes her because she turns out to be mother of one of the kids. Yeah. So he's yeah. got to go in and kill her kid. Mm-hmm. So it gives him that little crisis of conscience. Mm-hmm. That was like an interesting... Yeah. You know, addition after he's killed the first kid. Now he's like, now you got to kill the kid of this girl you liked right mm-hmm. 30 years ago. Right. <laughs> this uh, is the cross cut at this point, because this happens at the same time as another, I think, great scene. A gat man comes up to the farm. Oh, it's so good. This is one of my favorite scenes That's of this a movie. Great scene. Um, a gat man comes up to the farm because they're all searching for Joseph Gordon Levitt at a certain Who is this point. actor? He looks yeah, really familiar. He's, uh, he's been in a bunch of stuff. He's yeah, really, he's he, good. I he like had him. Two roles in Deadwood, and like I don't think anybody knew. It was oh, the he, same was in, guy. Uh, he was in. He was in No Country for Old Men. He was the deputy with Tommy Lee that's, Jones. Yes, that's he was, it. And he was really yep. good. I that's think it. He was in the road. We should actually look I'm him up. Yeah, look him up because he's, 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 he's a very good. He is a yeah, very good actor. Underrated, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's more stuff. Garrett Dillahunt. Yes. Yeah, he was so good and like i don't know he has this kind of like warm familiarity about him that like if he does come to your door you're like can't maybe i could trust this guy yeah, yeah. he rides that line where he's you know he looks like he could be an okay dude but he is um he's a little forceful and it feels like he could turn mm-hmm. yeah in, in yeah kind but, of a second. It, but the great thing is that it seems like he doesn't want to and that's what makes right. you like he's kind like, of trust him in, he's buddy. like i gotta do my job yeah. i'm just doing my like, job he's like, almost trustworthy because of that mm-hmm. yeah um, and, uh, this leads to a point we've had, um, uh, Emily Blunt's kid, Sid. Now mm-hmm. he's, um, we've been given hints that he is also TK in mm-hmm. this movie. Um, he gets at the very, very least he's emotionally unstable. It's at the very, very least, least because yeah. he gets into, a uh, he kids get big feelings, big <laughs> feelings. Uh, he gets into a fight with his mom, which starts out pretty humorous and then turns very dark, <laughs> like sitting in a room in a house. And all of a sudden there's a gust of wind, a gust of evil wind that blows you back because the kid is, um, cause he's freaking out and she goes in the other room and hides in a gun safe. Yeah, and being so, so you, afraid of your own kid, you right. have to hide in a safe. First yeah. seeing this, you're like, oh, well, what the hell? Why would she have to go hide in a gun safe from mm-hmm. him? And then during this part, the kid... And, well, and Sid keeps saying, you're not my mom. Yeah. He keeps saying that that's Sarah, that's not my mom. And we're like, okay, so somebody's lying here. Right. There is a whole backstory to that. Um, her talking about her party life and how mm-hmm. she gave up her kid for a few years. One of my favorite monologues in this movie. Right, yeah. 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 After her and Joseph Gordon Levitt like hook up, she's like, they're having pillow talk. She's TK floating around the Zippo and, and uh, she's talking like gives the, I call it the ridiculous party dress monologue. Cause mm-hmm. that's the part that always sticks out yeah. to me. She talks about how she got pregnant with him at 22 and kind of dumped him off on her sister and just continued to live this party life that we had previously seen. And then she got the call that, something went wrong and she came back to the house and he was sitting on the porch and I was in my ridiculous party dress with all my ridiculous shit and we still don't get the full story at this moment. Right, of how the sister died Yeah, where but, she had to come back. And so she came back and decided to stay on the farm and actually raise him yes. at that moment. Because he actually did kill the sister. He in, did. In, yes. in, and it's an accident, I guess. We find know, out at like the very end of the movie, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I guess what what I was like thinking is, you know, it's like, okay, if he's the rainmaker, then he remembers his mom getting shot, you know? So it's yep. like, okay, we know that mom was killed like mm-hmm. early on. He remembers like, his, you know, his memories from when he's a baby because he's also precocious and very right. intelligent. Well, yeah. he also says like, uh, I couldn't stop her from dying. I was too weak. He keeps saying stuff like that, but yeah, the kid's kind of an un- yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, uh oh, this kid's on his way to yeah. Right, but yeah. that also so, like ooh. we think we're talking about his mom getting shot at that mm-hmm. point because yeah. right, he's not big enough. To, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we don't realize yet that the kid's an unreliable narrator mm-hmm. at that point. You yes. know, so but this is good writerly, like you mm-hmm. know, laying the foundation yeah. This is discovery. And, and, this yeah. Is, yeah. 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 yeah, this is not telling, stopping, and telling yeah. your audience everything that's going on. He wrote it so well that you discover the stuff as you keep going. Yeah, and it's revealed to you. Mm-hmm. It's done very well. Yeah, but it cross cuts that scene. It cross cuts that scene where um, Garrett Delahunt comes back. Um, this is the night after uh, Joseph Gordon Levin and her got together. He comes downstairs and um, the Gatman's got a gun on her. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, "All right," and this is the part where he's like, "All right, I got to take you in. I don't want to," and everything. And the kid is there on the stairs, and he surprises Delahunt mm-hmm. and. 
uh, who aims his gun at him and scares the kid, and he trips and falls on the stairs. This is done very well in a slow motion, mm -hmm. and the choreography of this slow motion scene, I think, is fantastic, because mm -hmm. we have slow motion, the kid going down the stairs. We have Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who sees the kid and is going to go help him and stop him from falling at the end. Then we have... Uh, Garrett Delahunt, who's surprised, and mm -hmm. Emily Blunt, who is also running in the same direction as Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and we think they're going for the kid, mm -hmm. but the kid's falling down the stairs, and Emily Blunt grabs Joseph Gordon-Levitt to tackle him out of the house, mm -hmm. because she knows what's coming. Also, all the furniture in the house has been levitated. Uh, sound drops out entirely. Sound drops out mm -hmm. at a certain point, or there's that high-pitched mm -hmm. um, uh, beeping, like the, the whistling, ringing. Yeah, yeah, the ringing of it. Uh, he the gap man gets lifted into the air and and the kid goes nuts and angry and all that stuff and there's a pullback shot when everything does go silent of the guy being held in the air and blood just coming out of his body front and back mm -hmm. like he's like being, a cloud yeah the rainmaker like, making a rain blood right and he's it it's like there's certain shots in this movie I feel like they're they could be paintings mm -hmm. that I would love have on my wall this is one of them and then everything explodes like a a, 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 a an EMP of force mm -hmm. comes out of this house and uh i mean and then there's just wreckage everywhere they do a nice walk through the house where you see like the blood on the window where yeah a lot yeah. of blood you hear yeah. emily blunt go oh my god because mm -hmm. she found the remains of the guy whatever's left of him mm -hmm. and they don't show you that no you just see the outside of the window that's right. like yeah blood dripping out of it mm -hmm. yeah what yeah. movies today have like gone in for that just and shown you more of that because it doesn't it it does we you do don't get those to. scenes of leave blood. something to the imagination yeah, you don't right need to. like even when spoiler when kid blue gets killed later mm -hmm. on like mm -hmm. we're like oh is he dead he is in frame blood from the head like you know he's dead but we don't like linger on it and right. show you full force right when i saw this movie in theaters when you they pull back and you kind of see the blood starting to come out of his chest the whole audience gasped right everybody was go, like oh you, yeah, yeah you hear everybody in the yeah. Go, oh. yeah. <laughs> because you're waiting because it's, it's there's no sound to indicate what's happening right but it's also in the corner of the frame on yeah this, so you like don't obviously get it the image mm -hmm. right when you see it but then it starts happening and you're like, oh well, he pulled back from that, the Akira moment of someone just going, you know, yeah. you know all over the hallway or whatever. He right. just shows you the beginning of it. But he's, I think the reason that audiences respond that way, again, the good director, good editing, he's led you up to, you know, through all the other stuff that you're seeing. It's like you realize that, like, this guy's at the center of some kind of, uh, you know, intense supernatural yeah. <laughs> vortex yeah. or whatever. Like, like he vibrated him to pieces yeah. is what right. it feels like. And we've and this movie has told us over and over again that TK people can't do anything like this. Mm -hmm. they're, yeah. they're just assholes that float quarters, you know? So like this mm -hmm. is like, okay, this he's like the next level of X-Men, you know? Yeah. yeah. So now it's a superhero, supervillain origin story, possibly. <laughs> Brightburn. But then, yeah. the, well, I thought about that, <laughs> yeah. too, while we were watching it. But then the movie then becomes like a, a moral uh, question of, Would you, you know, shoot baby Hitler, the movie? Right. Yeah. <laughs> or is there another option, which is to, like, well, take that kid and love that kid to death and show him, you know, like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a more positive outlook. Mm -hmm. um, this is also a great point that separates old Bruce and young Bruce. Because this is where they split off, really, yeah. right? Yeah, as far as when we talk about morality and whatnot, like when um, young Bruce, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, learns that the kid um, is TK to a high extreme, probably how his um, uh, Emily Blunt's sister died, like Joseph Gordon-Levitt mm -hmm. puts that together, and he thinks the kid, the kid is nothing but trouble, and he has it in his mind that he's going to mm -hmm. kill him, too. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to search for him in the fields, and when he finds him, it's just, it's a poor Before kid. Before we get to that... Okay. Uh, I loved the part where she's like, oh, the book, the bookshelf fell and he got scared, but he can learn to control it and think of the good he can do. And I just love. And she was like, if I raise him good, he'll grow up to be good. And I just love that Joseph gordon goes, he he doesn't. Yeah. Like yeah. the matter of fact of mm -hmm. like, yeah. no, we know that that isn't going to work. That is so blunt. And or, just I like, mean, uh, he is thoroughly convinced that that is not going to work. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, look what he just saw. Like, right. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. He's, got, he's yeah. got a guy going like, I'm from the future. You don't want to go to France. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what's coming, but we're saying it's a malleable future, basically. Mm -hmm. that can be yes. uh, 
uh, adjusted. Mm -hmm. So what could actually happen if this kid turns out okay? But how's that going to happen when the Terminator shows up? So He looks like the Terminator coming down the road at the car at them, carrying that gun. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was like, ah, oh, this is badass. I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, so he's uh, Bruce Willis is totally the, uh, the he becomes the antagonist of yeah. this mm -hmm. part of the movie. Because uh, you're children. goddamn right he's going to kill that <laughs> <Right>. boy. <Yeah. laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt won't. Like, we yeah, learn in that yeah. moment when we find the kid in the field covered in blood, mm -hmm. and we learn he won't kill that's the kid. That's the point in the movie that they switch. Yeah. Yes. At the beginning, that is the... at the beginning, we're rooting for Bruce Willis, and we think that JGL's an asshole. That's the moment that we switch, mm -hmm. and we've got a new antagonist, protagonist. Yeah. It's good writing. <clears throat> yeah. It is it's good, good writing. writing, yeah. We've been leading to this point. Yeah. And then one of the best scenes, maybe in movie history, in my opinion. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, oh, I get chills every time I watch it. Every time. Sometimes I'll go on YouTube and just watch this yeah, scene. Yeah, and just watch this scene. Oh, my God. What a end. great I, monologue. I love it. It's a, yeah, it's a great <laughs> monologue. It makes me uh, it makes me uh, feel good about movies. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah. I love when it's done. When you take all these elements and you do them well. <laughs> yes. Like the the... The slowing down, the voiceover, which works for me. It's so um, simple. I've also realized that a lot of this ending um, is built upon Emily Blunt's performance in the mm -hmm. scene you just mentioned where she says, if I raise him, he could be good. Right. Like the end of the movie, she's got to sell that in order mm -hmm. for the end of this movie to work. Mm -hmm. And she does that very well. Mm -hmm. But we get to the end of this movie and all the all the threads, all the loops are coming together. All the yeah. threads are coming together. <laughs> in a cornfield. In a cornfield. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Emily Blunt and the kid. They're running away. Bruce Willis is shooting them as they go through the field. And uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is trying to drive his little truck in mm -hmm. order to, to get to them as well. Um, Bruce Willis shoots the kid and gets him in the face. Like Bruce Willis shoots a kid in the face in this movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's the synthetic <laughs> jaw comment. Right. Yeah. There's rumors he has a synthetic jaw. Yeah, because he got shot in the face as a kid. Yeah. Like it yeah. all. See? It yeah, all yeah. peppered in there. It mm -hmm. all comes together. And... um. Yeah, and then they end up with a standoff between her and Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Well, he, he 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 TK freaks out and yeah. raises them all up in the yes. air. So we're like, this is going to be a nuclear explosion. Yeah, yeah. Blood, just, yeah. Just, yeah. people popping all but over that, the place. That fucking kid actor, he's so he's, really he's good. so he's good. good. There's that moment, like things are about to like shit's about to hit the fan, mm -hmm. and Emily Blunt's just like, it's okay, baby, it's okay. Which I find soothing to oh, hear her. Right? Like, the way she delivers I was like, it, I'm I like, feel better. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Be fun. Yeah. I feel yeah. better. She is really selling it. She, yeah, she is. is. selling yeah. it. And that kid's face, when he switches from, like, angry telekinetic psycho, and then looks mom. at his mom, I was mom. like, oh yeah. my god, that kid is so good. They have good chemistry they together, do. too. They really like, do. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, you know, when you see movies that and the parent... That chemistry with the phone book. Right, but like, like, so when good. you see movies where like it doesn't, they don't feel like yeah. parent child, and it yeah. feels very awkward. There's none of that here. It all feels very natural. Yeah, it's very good them. casting. Yeah, yes. and very good again. That's uh, direction. You have to be able to, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, it ends up with uh, Bruce Willis does take a, a well after we get that, the monologue. Yeah. We get the monologue. Mm. We get well. The monologue. Okay, so this is what I guess it's it's a it's a cheat, but it's a narrative cheat where you've been listening to an unreliable narrator, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. anytime you hear somebody narrating, it's like here's the story of what happened in my life, but right. you don't expect them to be dead by the end of the movie, right? Yeah, <laughs> which I right. guess is unless the... it's Gotti. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Good point, yeah. Holly. Good yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. So and then he... you're like, just get to it already. <laughs> He's been narrating from <laughs> from heaven. Well, maybe he no. was too. And the narration stops after he dies. He's yeah, just yeah. in his head right yeah. at that moment. I know, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> yes, he's dead. Okay. Narrating yeah. all that stuff. But so, he finds a nice, uh, or I guess a unique solution to uh, the dilemma at hand. Sid's running through the field. Emily Blunt standing in front of him, willing to take the shot. Bruce Willis is is aiming and we hear and that's when I saw it and that's like if I you know it, this yeah. movie you're like this is it it's yeah. all I coming it's all, I, I think yeah. my heart started going yeah. like, oh I love this scene yeah. <laughs> and that's when I saw it and you're like because like you're putting the pieces together as he's putting them together too mm -hmm. and so he says um, a mother that would do anything for her son a mother that would die for her son yep. a, a man, man that would kill, that would for, kill his wife. for his wife a boy a broken boy. and alone the bad path before him and we see the it kid says, on the train, which is what happened to Joseph Gordon-Levitt as a right. kid, which we mm -hmm. heard earlier in the movie. Right. This is also... Symmetry. <laughs> symmetry. This is also um, Jeff Daniels' speech from the beginning so of the movie. So I changed it. So yeah. I changed it. Yes. And it comes back at the end. Yeah. So I changed it is a heavy phrase in this movie. It means so a lot. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. And yeah, he said, so I changed it. And he turns I saw the, the gun I saw, and yeah, shoots I saw himself the path set up a form mm -hmm. and it was the path bath mm -hmm. and, it, and it was a circle. 
mm-hmm. round and round. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, so I changed, changed it. it. And then shoots himself in the chest. And and then this part, okay, I didn't catch on to this until maybe the fifth or sixth time I watched this movie. Um he his hair? No, the so after he shoots himself in the chest and falls down, we cut to Bruce Willis. Mm-hmm. And he's standing there holding the gun. And then his face drops. And he looks around. He doesn't know where he is in that split second before he disappears because he just lost 30 years worth of memories. Mm. Oh. And I, wow. the first time I realized that, I was like, oh, my God, that's so sad. And now if the, this Bruce Willis health thing is true, this is even sadder. This is mm. compounding even more. Mm. This is a really sad movie, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It just gets more layered as the years go on. Because there is a second between when he shoots himself and when he disappears. And in that second, yeah, he has a full on, like, where am I right now? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought of it that yeah. way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then it's just a. Well, yeah. I, yeah. And I like that, uh, you know, saying about the hair thing, like uh, Johnson had layered that in throughout the movie mm-hmm. that, you know, in the absence of a mother, he likes, he remembers the sensation of her running his fin- her mm-hmm. fingers through his hair. Yeah. I didn't catch that line before because mm-hmm. it barely comes out when he's talking to Piper Parabo mm-hmm. at a certain point. Like he just, she used to rub my hair. It's very quiet in there. Yeah. 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 Emily Blunt does it uh, mm-hmm. when they're in bed together. And mm-hmm. then at the end, it, and it's like, but. It's it's cool because the character doesn't know the significance of this, but we do as the audience right. because it's been right. built up yeah, you know, right. through the entire movie. Yeah. And then they go home. Yeah. Sid and, Sid lots and Sarah of silver. go home. Lots yeah. of silver and gold. Yeah. 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 And now that like loopers don't exist anymore, I guess, like, because like Piper Para- Parabo says like, oh, I can't take silver. It has strings, meaning like it's dirty money. Right. Mm, right but like yeah. if all it's somebody literally blood money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if all if loopers don't exist anymore because Bruce Willis killed them all, I guess there's no strings anymore. Right. No, so, only in Kansas. Apparently. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. We don't know how big the looper syndicate is. So did you yeah. find it weird that the uh, the loopers in the future look like Amish? <laughs> you mean the gangsters? Yeah, the gangsters. Yeah, the gang. The, yeah, the, the big the hats, hats and the dusters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They do look, yeah a little <laughs> it goes. It goes back to what Jeff Daniels was saying. You're just copying a copy. It's like, that, it is, that continues in. The but future. I like again that they even you know when they're trying to yeah you know, like you're starting at 2044 and trying to extrapolate this future world yes. like 30 years on like how yes. would fashion change? Right. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's Looper. Uh, I think so. We're going to go around the table and tell you whether or not we would recommend that you watch it. But before that, we're going to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Do you think he's ever been through a time loop? Did he come from the future? Ooh. He told us know. never to go to France. France. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. you, I didn't know Igor was French. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Yeah. Well, we want to let you know how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Sat Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or Instagram. Oh, sorry. Or by email. <laughs> I was like, what? Sat <laughs> 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 Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or that, that Instagram. Was, that was Holly's I don't know where I'm at. Moment. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Holly's going to disappear. <laughs> sorry. I, I <laughs> that's, that's what happens. The looper and bad mm-hmm. cues. Uh, Instagram is Saturday night. Freak show uh, about tonight's movie. Oh, well, first of all, we have a review oh. from Red and Blue Bulldog, who says, oh, my God, nice podcast, decent content. But going through your entire catalog, I find no episodes covering the following titles. Ooh. Treasure of the Four Crowns, The Last Shark, a.k.a. Great White, <laughs> Baby, Secret of the Lost Legend, what? Band of the Hand, Millennium. Okay, there are more glaring omissions, but we can start there. I'll be watching and waiting. Keep it coming. I'm intrigued by all some right. of those I mean, titles. I like the yeah. last shark. Yeah. I was going to say, that sounds like a Holly pick. Yeah. I'm just saying. That's all right. We, will, uh, <laughs> we always appreciate uh, suggestions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Hall uh, of Fame, wants mm-hmm. us to know that about Looper, we inducted about three people, oh, but nice. they're all uncredited in other oh. movies, and I don't know. Uh, so Wayne DeHart was mm-hmm. in this movie as the Seth Vagrant. That would be the future the version future Seth? of yeah. Paul Dano. Okay. Uh, he was also the market customer. You remember him from Dark Angel, a.k.a. I Come in nope. Peace. And he was the vendor in RoboCop 2. Anyone? The uh, vendor. So he's the hallway? And he's the hallway. He's the hallway. Okay. Okay. Uh, about Looper, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, Looper with facial prosthetics so good you'll swear it's Joseph Gordon-Levitt in makeup. <laughs> 
I haven't seen <laughs> this one, but friends of mine have and say it's okay, really well, good. Okay, you haven't seen it. Then. <laughs> he says, I have long since stopped trying to find a time travel movie that doesn't make some glaring mistake with time travel, so my new standard is hoping the movie sticks with its own internal logic, which may be, which may be me, this movie, or maybe this movie does. You'll have to tell me. I mean, like glaring mistake with time travel. I'm no, I'm not an astrophysicist, so like I'm, I'm not p- here to pick it well, apart. Just, you know also, what I'm saying? Like, also, uh, it's not real. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know yeah. this or not. We, but we, as of this I, moment, how can we say it's not accurate yeah, when we can't even time them, travel? Come on, time cop. Uh, uh, oh come like, on! Yeah, well, I'm, that's what I'm saying uh, uh, on a plot level. I get what you're saying. <laughs> uh, Grant Parrish says sometimes I prefer to keep my sci-fi compartmentalized from other sci-fi. It's a time travel movie. There's so many awesome time travel shenanigans in it and like, whoa, cool. But then they throw in this weird carry thing with the deus ex machina. I was like, this is supposed to be a time travel movie, but it was fine. It's not though. It was fine. <laughs> and JGL is doing a good Bruce Willis. Yeah. Travis Legler writes in and says, Looper sounds like Bruce Willis making future career choices and returning over and over to mediocre action movies. This one is kind of like the sixth sense. And that when you first watch it, it's an interesting idea. However, unlike The Sixth Sense, the movie is not as much fun watching on a second viewing. I, I don't. I thoroughly see, disagree. I don't see the connection at all because this movie doesn't keep anything from you. This like The Sixth Sense has a major reveal. This movie is upfront about all of its goings on. I think they're just talking about the um, the plot mechanics of it, about the reveal. Right, at the but end. but that I think that is the only similarities there. But the sixth sense isn't as enjoyable on a second viewing because that big reveal changes the whole movie, right? And right. so, like, but there's nothing like that. Like in once this you movie. know, this movie doesn't have a device right. like that. Yeah. So that's why I'm not understanding. Yeah, that sounds the like you're just like, oh, you wanted a time travel movie, but you've got a TK movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, last week we wa- or two weeks ago we watched a movie called New York Ninja. Oh yes. <laughs> Brad Henderson, who works at Vinegar Syndrome, right. uh, wrote in to say uh, we did not hire lip readers. We wrote the script ourselves by trying to read their lips. I think that's what we said in the episode. I think so. Well done. But we were like, they somebody lip read that. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It just it, tells no, you they, they created, didn't listen to the episode. So. The they lip read and wrote their script from that yeah. themselves. Uh, Chris Huddleston writes in and says, I saw a father and son with matching rat tails in a Home Depot the other day. <laughs> what? Why Cut. does this weird hairstyle not ever completely die? But I don't. Hereditary rat tails. Huh? I don't understand it, to tell you the <laughs> no, truth. No, it needs to die. As it's one of the worst for, for, for anything. I didn't understand it the first time around. I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't do that. Who? <laughs> Do that to your children. Don't do that to your <laughs> child children. abuse. It really is at a certain point. Why? What? What, what do you? You need to grab it. Like what? You know, it was unacceptable in the at Star Wars points. prequels too. Yeah. It, what, those don't get a pass either. The rat tails in those movies are well, not I mean, acceptable. Maybe New York Ninja will bring it back. It will have more rat tails. Only as a power future. move, like this guy had. It. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you suck on it when you power. Oh, don't you say sniff that. it. Okay, both of you stop. <laughs> So Brett Williams uh, finds himself amused to be christened the freak show science reporter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so now we're going to pause for a <laughs> report <laughs> from our <laughs> science <laughs> correspondent, <laughs> Brett Williams. <laughs> he says that, uh, okay, so in New York Ninja, there is a plutonium killer. Oh, there is. Uh, plutonium, Brett Williams says, is a silvery gray Asinide, atinide, I don't know, metal that comes becomes yellow word. when yeah, that's it's why exposed he's correspondent. to air, and it has a half-life of 24,100 years and is made during a nuclear reaction. Plutonium emits alpha particle re- re- radiation, which is unable to pass through the skin, and consuming contaminated water or foods result in the majority passing out in feces because the digestive system is bad at absorbing that. You're paying attention here, right? Yeah. Because this is stuff I did not know. But if you inhale it, and it lodges in the lung tissue. It'll kill the lung cells, and it'll cause scarring while exposing blood to the alpha particle rev- radiation and also the kidneys. So he's saying basically that uh, that guy didn't ha- wasn't long for that world. Well, he says if you inject it, it would be lethal for the average sized person, but inhaling it would require four times that dose for lethality. And death comes from acute radiation poisoning and eventual cancer. So in the movie. I he learned says, that from the Watchmen. Okay, so he's saying he's not <laughs> sure how any of this explains the superpowers of the plutonium killer or how plutonium was used in the experiments to create him. I remember he was huffing plutonium, yeah. wasn't he? He was very close to it. I would think the breathing was... Okay, so it should have killed like him. that charge up from that it, too, alpha, so he was yeah. handling it, yeah. <laughs> Losing a nuclear charge like Godzilla? 
Yeah. Yes, that, that, that was the we're Godzilla of that yeah. movie. Okay. So basically, we have learned that the movie is impossible. That he. Oh he no! Not he New York not Ninja. New York Ninja is not feasible. A super what? Villain, an immortal. I'm disappointed. I was hoping he was super out there. Yeah, I thought that was a biographical. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we thank you all very much for writing in. Yes, Seriously, we do appreciate it. Uh, and now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. Colin, you can go first tonight. <laughs> what did you think about Looper? I enjoy Looper more every time that I saw it. I saw it in the theater and was kind of, um, I don't know. I don't know if it was expectation based or whatever. Maybe I thought it was more of a time travel action movie. Mm-hmm. Maybe when it took its uh, you know detour into superhero territory in the second half. I mean, I'm saying superhero territory, right. but I mean well, there I had been X Men movies at that mm-hmm. point, so you realize what the tropes are, and that was less interesting to me. Um, but when you rewatch it, I guess this is um, what I did get out of a rewatch. You begin to you know really appreciate the effort i guess it feels like a lot of effort wrote, went into the writing of the movie mm. i guess this is why i like ryan johnson's um uh, stuff you know i mean you know, original last, work last jedi uh notwithstanding mm-hmm. we'll just take that <laughs> off the table mm-hmm. <laughs> well like you said i think he did some interesting things there but like every decision was wrong <laughs> for that franchise uh mm-hmm. here by himself it's like he's interesting as a plot you know, constructing plots he I, but i think that comes from you know he must be a puzzle guy right he likes huh. fitting puzzle pieces together oh, yeah, look at all of his spend, movies yeah right yeah because they have that kind of plot structure but he also uh is able to write compelling characters you know so usually you have one or the other i think christopher nolan writes compelling plots but you know his characters are oh for sure yeah Yeah. more lacking where ryan johnson seems more like a fully developed you know writer in that regard and he's a very good director i mean there's no getting around that i mean a lot of just you know watching some of the the choices that he must have made you know constructing some of these scenes there's like you know he's inside your head or you're inside his head, I guess. Watch it. He leads you right to where you he wants you, what he wants you to think and, you know, feel at every given yeah. second of it. Mm-hmm. Like that's uh, that's a significant, you know, uh, capability that he has. So, um, I yeah, I um, every like I said, every time I watch the movie, I end up liking it more. Uh, I did buy a copy, I think, the last time we were talking about it, because mm-hmm. I think Sean maybe was going off about like how great Looper was, and I'm like, really? We were probably talking about that ending. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I probably. gotta go, and I watched it again, I was like, this movie is like really damn good, so I'm gonna recommend, yeah, I think you should check out uh, Looper. I think it's a, a very, very good movie. Holly, what'd you think? Hmm. Um, yeah, I really like this movie. This is actually like the second time i've watched it maybe do you feel like you forgot a lot of it or yeah because it's probably been what a decade since you've seen it it's been a few years because i didn't watch it when it came out so that happened with me too i yeah the second time i realized i'd forgotten a lot i forgot a lot of this movie yeah Mm -hmm. i watch it's been several years not it hasn't been 10 years but it's been several years um but i really like this movie i i like that it has elements that I'm not expecting from a time travel movie because I do I did go into it thinking like oh it's time travel, but then watching it it's a lot more than that and I I like that about it it's surprising to me. Um, I agree that there's there's a great uh, there's great character development in this there's great character arc in this on both sides and I love the reverse character arc you know the changes protagonist antagonist it's it's really phenomenal I think the acting is fantastic. It's it's a really well done movie. It's a well constructed story. Um, I, you can tell that Ryan Johnson put a lot of time and thought into this. Um, so I can understand that it's a you know decade long passion project for him. It makes sense because there's there's a lot there that I think needed a lot of time and effort. Um, I can look at this movie and think. I understand why someone was like, let's give that guy a Star Wars movie. Yeah. yeah. I get it. I was oh, excited yeah. I get it. that he was doing Star Wars <laughs> I because yeah. I loved this movie. Yeah, so I was yeah. ecstatic. I was like, fuck yeah, yeah. Ryan Johnson gets to yeah. do a Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. It makes sense to me watching this. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe hold the reins a little bit next time. But mm-hmm. anyway, I, I really I really like this movie. I, I, I agree. I think Ryan Johnson is a great director. He really is. That's I never questioned that. I just questioned the choices he made with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, That's fair. 
Yeah, but yeah, I, it's a great movie. I don't really have anything bad to say about this movie. It's it's a solid movie. I like it a lot. And that the ending, you're right. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's it's so good. <laughs> I mean, I'm dead fucking tired today, and <laughs> I was never tired watching this movie. Mm -hmm. I really on my I was worried on that my, you might fall. No, asleep. on my drive here, I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking fall asleep watching this goddamn movie, <laughs> and I never fell asleep. Mm -hmm. I'm very impressed. Good. It holds your attention. I was the whole worried. Time. I know. I was too. No, it's, yeah, I was very quiet when we were watching this because movie. it's so good. And, but I was like, "Is it quiet because they're all absorbed, or is it quiet because yes. they're checked out or asleep?" No, you know? it's so we're quiet because it's good. Yeah. yeah, I got nothing bad to say. Looper's great. Mm -hmm. Definitely watch Looper. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have anything bad to say. I have. Um, I think this is a really good movie. Um, like I said, um, you know, we talked about watching that last scene. I, in fact, I think. Most of my viewing of this has just been watching that last scene <laughs> Same. Where, I, where I haven't sat down and watched the whole movie from start You've to just finish. You've watched that scene. Yeah. Like, a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I'm watching it again tonight because it's probably been like like two years since I watched this. But sitting down and watching it tonight, like I'll, I got a lot more out of the movie. Colin, I think you're right. I think the more you watch this, the more you see the little bits that he has built into this movie, whether he's written them or visually. Um, I think Ryan Johnson is, I mean, yeah, I think he's a fantastic director. I think he's a great writer. Um, I'm, I start not to blame him so much for the other properties that he's worked on, but we're, we're starting the healing process. Yeah, tonight, I think aren't so. We? Yeah. I mean, we just have to go back to this, you know, Knives Out as well. The healing. Mm -hmm. Colin's just like never. Well, because I keep remembering the fucking scene with the whatever the uh, camels on. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't, oh. don't want to talk about. Damn it! That fucking this. casino planet. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah. Canto sorry. bite <laughs> can bite my ass. That's C Canto bite my ass. Yeah, Canto <laughs> bite my ass. Um, aside from that. Um, I mean, I, I, uh, I think Ryan Johnson's great. I've been a big fan of his since brick. Like I remember being very excited when that movie was coming out. Um, yeah, this movie it's, I mean, it's, I think it's, uh, probably perfectly cast. Um, Emily Blunt is like, she's the, she's the breakout from this for me, I believe. I, and I think for a lot of people, this was uh, a big role for her. The kid I think is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, he's doing a hell of a job in here. It does get down to, kid x-men movie a little bit at the end which i don't particularly like but ryan johnson made me like kid x-men at the end of this movie because it's, it's like a light spice on the yeah movie. It's it, not, it is yeah. yeah um i uh, bruce willis is bruce willis i think is doing uh giving his all on this i don't it's still not quite a great performance for me i think he's trying but i also don't think at this point he has the ability to go beyond what he did in this movie i still like it I'm a, also, I'm going to say, I, I was thinking this earlier, I don't know why I didn't say it, but we were talking about Bruce Willis, or JGL acting like Bruce Willis instead mm -hmm. of the other way around, because JGL's a better actor. Yes. Because... Well, yes, that is. Bruce yes. Willis is just Bruce, Bruce Willis. Willis. It, that's yeah. it. Well, yeah. that's what I was yeah. saying. Yeah, that's like, it. Because you watch... You... You can't, like, I can't pinpoint ticks with JGL. Like, I can't, yeah. I can't think of a way to do an impression about him right. because right. he acts. Right. Bruce Willis is Bruce Willis, so it's easy to do that. And you movie. hire him because he's Bruce Willis. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, but he's, he's, he's given it his all, which, you know, many people haven't seen that in years. So, I mean, that's a plus for this movie as well. We do get the, um, the obvious Bruce Willis action moments in it. But again, it all works together in, I think, a very well-written movie, a very well-acted movie. Um, and there's just moments, there's moments in this movie that I keep going back to, which I think are uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, I recommend Looper. I, I think it's great. Michaela. Uh, <laughs> I, I was like, I was she like, didn't say yeah. my name, so you don't get yours. Michaela. <laughs> because it took me a minute. I was like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Michaela, uh, take us home. I, I saw this movie in theaters three times, you know, and okay. two of those times I went by myself because I was just like, I need to see it again. And I don't think anyone else is going to tolerate me taking them Did to Did you go by movie. yourself or was your other self? It may, maybe watching 30 it? Yeah. years from me now was there like, watching I want to go back me. and watch yeah. Looper in theaters again. <laughs> maybe, for maybe she was sitting a few years behind you just watching. Right. Like, I was having my Nicole Kidman in the theater moment and they were... <laughs> and they were that Spider-Man meme yeah. of of uh, what's his name James Franco looking at Tobey Maguire. That was yeah. me and my f future self in Looper. <laughs> um, it. I mean, it, this is like in my top ten favorite movies of all time. Like, I love it. I love it more every time I watch it. I've probably seen it ten, eleven, twelve times now. I don't even know. It's um like, I, yeah. When when I 
after I watched this and I found out Ryan Johnson was doing Star Wars, I was like, that's perfect. I can totally understand and I love it and I'm excited for it. And I remember after I saw The Last Jedi, I was like, I can't believe the guy that made Looper did this to me. And I felt very personally attacked and hurt and offended <laughs> by that. And um, it's, it's, yeah, it's just, I don't know what more to say than what we've already said about how great it is. Mm-hmm. Like that ending sequence is just so well earned and yet so well executed and you know we've talked about the direction and the writing but the editing is also really great in this movie and the editing has a lot to do with how those things hit you like the way the sound drops out the way the shots are slow-mo or cut quickly or you know it's all so good it's just a well-crafted movie and i i forgot to bring it up earlier but 2012 was the year of joseph gordon levitt you could not get away from this dude in 2012 was that a summer of uh 500 Days of Summer, was that? No, oh. no, no, that was way before this. Okay. Um, he had The Dark Knight Rises, mm-hmm. Looper, mm-hmm. Premium Rush, that bike messenger <laughs> movie that nobody saw, but there was trailers for constantly. Yeah. Was Michael Shannon and, uh, in that movie? I think so. He's and Lincoln. No, Link- Lincoln. Lincoln came out. The- Four big movies in one year. Holy that's shit, year. yeah. That's a good year. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like you don't see him in anything anymore. Like, I don't know what he's up to, but I haven't seen him in what anything in probably to? like five or six years at least, so... <laughs> Probably I'm, on television somewhere. Yeah. Oh, now that you say that, yeah, I keep getting commercials for a terrible, terrible show. Oh, He's shit, the Uber super, one. Super oh, the Uber pumped, one. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is a terrible name for a show, and nobody yeah. wants to watch a show about Uber. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I have no the creation idea of yeah. Uber. It's, yeah. It's, it's oh! Co- yeah. yeah. Okay. It's super pumped, I think, is what it's right. called. Terrible name. Okay. Um, but it looks like um, Social Network. Yeah. yeah. But like, well, I mean, a, th- like, but like a fraction of the budget. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, I would like, like for Hulu social network. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hulu original. It's a social yeah. network, but it's MySpace. That's yeah, the answer. It's a yeah. Little lower. I I would like for him to have this kind of career again. You know, um, I think part of it was he was in that bad Man on Wire remake that oh, Zemeckis, that Zemeckis did. Zemeckis movie. Yeah, oh, you yeah. want to watch a movie about a guy walking across buildings? Like really, no. we're gonna make a whole ass movie. movie about. I saw it. <laughs> but there's a documentary already about yeah. that guy that yeah. you could just watch instead. I was yeah. convinced that Brent was the only person that saw that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um it's yeah, I just I love this movie. I love an emotional uh reality bending movie. I've realized this is a subgenre I'm very into like uh Interstellar, Inception, um The Fountain, you know, I love a sad reality bending movie. Yeah. Yeah, love it. Lo- mm-hmm. And uh like I remember going to see Interstellar and be like I'm going to cry in this movie and I know it and I for sure fucking did and I loved it, you know. <laughs> uh and that's how I feel about Looper too and I I think that um it was important to bring it because we don't get movies like this anymore. Like we talked about as far as the budget and the way things are done and, and like just evidence by our mailbag on how light it was and how half the people writing in haven't even seen it. I'm like, okay, this should have been as big as the matrix. In my opinion, this movie should have been a cultural like touchstone of the early 2010s, right? This should be the matrix of that decade. And yet everyone didn't watch it and forgot about it at the same time so oh, damn i hope not yeah it seems like it it's seems i like mean everyone's sleeping on looper. yeah well, so we're here give it a back. chance watch looper reignite your love for ryan johnson well, now that we've done that there's about to be a resurgence you yeah, know yeah 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 <laughs> oh, that's very true <laughs> yeah yeah he's gonna now like we're gonna get a trailer for knives out two tomorrow like <laughs> something's gonna happen. no I, ign's gonna be like 10 years of looper why the yeah. closing the loop on 10 years of looper there you go yeah. that's what i go. gonna write this yeah. week yeah yeah so the, the zeitgeist yeah we've got our finger on the pulse there yep. you go yeah yeah <laughs> recommend right. well there you go that's a universal recommend saturday night freak show approved it does oh, yeah that's the i had one more thing i'm sorry it's a real deep nerd ship but it's important so <laughs> the title card for looper and all the fonts and the branding is a font called futura Oh yeah, oh. <laughs> and Futura is famous for one very specific thing: that its O is a perfect circle. Mm. Ah. Wow! So, I like details. That before, details. That's why you tune like in it. to yep. the Saturday Night Freak like Show it. podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you to Learn our resident about... graphic, yeah, designer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. graphic designer correspondent. This, <laughs> the early 2010s is also when Futura was very trendy too. So like yeah. they hopped on a trend, but it worked for them yeah, the most. Because that shows up in like uh, Star Trek, doesn't it? When they're everything uh, Wes Anderson has ever done. He yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or even it's uh, it's in uh, Marvel movies and shit when they're doing Avengers shit and all that. Mm-hmm. This is where the planet is, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Well, that's uh, so. I guess um, we hope you'll join us next week. We're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. What are we watching next week? Uh, we're going to get weird. Ooh. We're going to we're going to we're going to do something that Holly is never going to forgive me for because we're going to watch a 3D movie. Goddamn, we're going to put our glasses on and we're going to watch Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. Oh, also known as Flesh for Frankenstein. Cool. Okay. I don't know anything about this, so I mean, all right, I'll forgive you because I'm excited to watch an Andy Warhol. 
Okay. Yep. Did he have anything <laughs> like, to do with it? Good. We're going to find out <laughs> next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>